I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow ya. Embattled Flagler County Administrator Craig Coffey is defending his record. He sent an eight-page letter to Flagler County Commissioners clarifying what he called rumors and misleading reports regarding the Sheriff's Office Operations Center that's been dubbed a sick building. Sheriff Rick Staley blames Coffey for slow progress on identifying the root cause of why dozens of employees who worked in the building fell ill and filed workers' comp claims. The building has been evacuated since June. In his letter, Coffey says there's no plans to build a new operations center because there's no evidence that shows the current facility can't be remedied. The county spent $6.5 million to refurbish the former hospital and turn it into the existing sheriff's office headquarters. It would cost up to $14 million to design and construct a new building. Coffey sought to squash rumors that the county has $9 million in a reserve fund for a new public library that could instead go towards a new operations center. He says no such fund exists and a loan would be needed to construct a satellite library in Benel. Coffee adds, due to a lawsuit, a judge has called for the preservation of the Sheriff's Office Operations Center that bars the kind of invasive testing that might be needed to determine exactly what's wrong. Coffee says he expects that order to be lifted now that employees' inspectors have completed their testing. He disputes claims as well that CDC inspectors found water in the building during a walkthrough and claims that the purpose of routine maintenance was not to destroy evidence so inspectors wouldn't find mold or toxins. In the end, Coffey says he doesn't believe the building is the source of employees' illnesses, since inspectors have found no link. He says his heart goes out to employees who are sick, but says some are not, and instead are standing in solidarity with their colleagues. Coffey's fate will be discussed at a meeting in the new year. This portion of Flagler's Morning News is brought to you by the Daytona Beach International Airport. Save time, money, and stress. The Daytona Beach International Airport, it's just plain easy. A teen is hurt in a drive-by shooting in Palm Coast, John Arking reports. A Palm Coast man was arrested last Friday morning by Flagler County Sheriff's deputies as a suspect in the drive-by shooting of a teenager. The victim, 18-year-old Cavante Lamar Gillisley, was shot about 10 a.m. outside a home on Bressler Lane. He was taken by ambulance to Halifax Health Medical Center and was last known to be in stable condition. After receiving a description of the suspect vehicle, deputies were able to quickly locate it at a gas station on Palm Coast Parkway. Deputies took multiple people into custody who were in the vehicle, and after questioning them, 21-year-old Maurice Tyron Moultrie was charged with aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. Authorities say Moultrie was meeting Gillisley to purchase marijuana. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm John Arkin. A Saturday afternoon crash along I-95 in Palm Coast sends four people to the hospital. With more, here's Tony Magoo. Three people were seriously injured and a nine-year-old girl was critically injured in a four-vehicle accident that started when a Chevy Silverado rear-ended a Volkswagen starting a chain reaction crash. The accident forced the closing of all northbound lanes of the interstate until crews could clear the wreckage. The driver of the pickup truck, David Blank, 58 of Daytona Beach, was cited for careless driving. The driver of the Volkswagen, Delia Gonzalez Rodriguez, 37 of Miami, and her 14 year old passenger Eduardo Prieto, also of Miami, were transported to Halifax Health Medical Center in Daytona Beach in serious condition. Another passenger in the Volkswagen, nine-year-old Sophia Prieto, also of Miami, was airlifted to Arnold Palmer Children's Hospital in Orlando in critical condition. Gregory Camp, 62, of Palm Coast, was transported to Florida Hospital Flagler in serious condition. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Tony Magoo. It is the day after Christmas, so you may be keeping your tree up today, but when you decide to take it down, Palm Coast has a perk for you. You'll get a tree. In exchange for you donating that to us, we will give you a free three-gallon evergreen tree that you can plant in your yard. Cindy Lane, the communications and marketing manager for the city of Palm Coast, says the 12th annual Christmas tree recycling event is coming up on January 5th. It's from 8 to 1. It's at the Fuel Depot on Utility Drive that's off Old Kings. Lane said the city will keep your tree and turn it into mulch, and you will get a tree to grow in your yard. Don't forget to take everything off your Christmas tree before it goes into the chipper. Next time, more on what you can bring to the recycling event. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Amy Cherry.